Hello, my name is Janae. Welcome to my channel. The day that I am recording this is the day that the news broke. Pharrell Williams is now the new creative director at Louis Vuitton. And I just had some immediate thoughts, so I just wanted to get straight into it. So when I first heard this news, I honestly expected everyone to just effortlessly give this amazing artist and celebrity all the praise and congratulations for another step in his long, long career as a tastemaker in this industry. But I was honestly relieved that there were so many comments countering that congratulations, and we all kind of had the same initial thought. Why are we giving another celebrity a role that could have been so beneficial and groundbreaking for a fashion designer with the technical skill to come in and design a new chapter for Louis Vuitton. There were so many names listed over the past couple of months as possible successors to Virgil Abloh for this role. I honestly thought it was gonna be Martine Rose. And outside of Martine Rose and Grace Wills Bonner, there were just so many other options, but the allure of celebrity was deemed more important. And that's just how the system goes. Pharrell Williams is well respected as an artist. He has a history in the fashion business. He is a style icon. He is a walking legend. He is a bona fide taste maker. You cannot deny any of these facts, but I'm a bit of a purist when it comes on to fashion. Like just because someone is well respected in creative spaces, does that mean that they get to just skip the line? It also feels like Louis Vuitton is trying to claim validity in the culture, black culture. It's like Louis Vuitton is trying to secure this similar effect that they had when Virgil Abloh was appointed. But not only that, this choice to have Pharrell as the creative director also feels like Louis Vuitton is trying to make sure that they have a seat at the table when talking about the intricate relationship that hip hop has with menswear. I personally don't think that Louis Vuitton would have fell behind with Gen Z, the culture, or any other target markets that they're trying to reach by giving this position to a lesser known successor. Just to acknowledge the other side of this appointment, you don't need to be cutting muslin and sewing the pieces by hand to be a creative director. I feel like Pharrell has decades of such insanely tapped in art and style references in his head that he can successfully direct a vision and he'll be given access to a team that can actualize it. In regards to aesthetics, I feel like this is where Louis Vuitton wants to go and accessories from Pharrell would just be insane and I want to see what he conjures up. And then on a business level, we can have all of this hopeful thinking, but when making money is a huge factor to the business, why take a risk on a new designer when you can just hand over an entire team to a celebrity who has a better chance because of his relevancy to bring in sales? I also see a pattern of houses bringing in the new unknown designer only when the business is already underwater and desperately needs to transition if they want to reach the Gen Z customer. It's almost like bringing in a new designer is used as a last resort. Like, oh, if we don't bring in somebody soon, there will be no anticipation for our brand anymore. And we saw that with Ferragamo bringing in the young Maximilian Davis and Bottega Veneta with Daniel Lee. And with Louis Vuitton, my, my thought is, why take on the risk of a new designer when you're already in this upward trajectory? In past interviews and lectures, I remember Virgil Abloh mentioning the kids a lot, speaking to the kids. And, and to me, that's a reference to the students of life, the kids that knew nothing about fashion and they're learning about fashion for the first time, or you know, the kids that are in school for fashion or not in school for fashion, the skateboarders. He would even reference himself as that kid, you know, with this innocence, seeing himself as this little boy in the Louis Vuitton office who was using Louis Vuitton off-white Pyrex architecture as this case study of what it is that he wanted to create. And with this open role, I was really excited for that imagination and possibility to live on, to show the kids that you can be a non-celebrity and work your way up to Paris. I was really excited about the idea that, again, very purist, that technical skill, training, a deep hands-on understanding of the craft would come before who's the most popular person in the room. Also, popularity gives leverage, 
but it isn't a guarantee that everything is going to work out. And I think Rihanna's Fenty is a great example of that. Um, and, and just like overall, like celebrity doesn't necessarily mean that the brand is going to sell itself out and everyone's going to love it. Something great will come from his collection later this year. I'm not taking that away from him. He is a visionary. He is a tastemaker. He is a creative director at heart. So it's like he can do this, but I would have preferred that, you know, we can see some new fresh faces. There's so many amazing designers that could have killed this role just as well. Someone, anyone that could have really benefited from a moment like this. But that's how the system goes. They need to sell. LVMH is still recovering from the pandemic. I get it. I get it. It's business. I get it. Anyway, I just really want to share my thoughts on that recent fashion news. Thank you so much for watching this all the way through. And thank you to my 300 subscribers. I really appreciate that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. But I am so proud that I have 300 subscribers right now. Um, I will see you in my next video. It's going to be on New York Fashion Week. So I'll see you there. Bye.